गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई फील रियली हैप्पी टू बी हियर अगेन फॉर माई कोर्स एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम नाउ आई एम इन वेरी लास्ट स्टेज ऑफ माई कोर्स दैट इज द क्वेश्चन बैंक सेशन एंड टूडे आई एम स्टार्टिंग क्वेश्चन बैंक एंड देयर एंसर ऑफ मॉड्यूल वन and you know that module one topic is introduction to aircraft systems so <clears throat> you know my name is dr vaidhi dubedi professor from department of aeronautical engineering institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad india as of now i have completed my uh, 90% of the course there Term, definition and terminology, then cases, studies, and all the five units I have already completed. Now I am in the first of question bank session of introduction to aircraft systems. So in this, there are different questions, and these topics and the CO mappings are given here. Airframe systems questions, CO one, vehicle systems. mission system and avionic systems a basic introduction of these topics i am going to discuss in today's lecture so the first question is summarize the airframe and structural system so what are the airframe and the structural system we can divide airframe systems into three main parts first one is the wing system empennage system and the fuselage system just i want to discuss here and i want to show you here otherwise so if you see the first one is the wing system so wing is the main component which generates the lift of the aircraft so these are the main wing the next is the empennage if you see here we have the vertical stabilizer we have the horizontal stabilizer vertical stabilizer there is a uh, this you can see here this is the vertical stabilizer here we have the rudder here we have the horizontal stabilizer and here the black color is a elevator so this system from here to here this one is called the empennage system in the empennage system your horizontal stabilizer vertical stabilizer and the tail part some 20% of the tail part including some windows here and this door this you can see here the door is also visible this is called the empennage so this is the empennage system and third one is very big item from here to here this tube part where people's pilots air crews cargo fuel everything is electronics equipments aviation avionics equipments everything is stored that is called the fuselage system so these are the parts of the we can divide this thing your aircraft systems into four pillars airframe systems airframe or structural system vehicle system avionics system and the missile system if you talk about the airframe systems we have the wing empennage and the fuselage if you talk about the vehicle system we have the fuel fuel system propulsion system flight control system and hydraulic system in avionic system we have the navigation control display and the communication system in mission system we have the sensors missions and the weapon system so next comes under airframe and structural system parts so what are the airframe and the structural system parts so here i will start from here it is a cockpit then here we, we have the fuselage the fuselage is to hold things together and the carry the payload we have here the slats increase the lift we have the spoiler changes the lift drag and the roll here is the aileron it is changing the roll flaps increases the lift and the drag elevators are here they change the pitching of the aircraft nose up and the nose down rudders are changing the your uh, nose towards the left or the right vertical stabilizer is controlling the yaw and or stabilizing the yaw horizontal stabilizers the controlling the pitch winglets decreases the drag wing generates the lift turbine engine generate the thrust so just a brief i have given for all the now i will talk about the airframe systems just now i have discussed about airframe in airframe system we have the wing fuselage and the empennage so no wing no lift wing is producing lift 
drive and the nose down pitching moment. Design requirement is performance, stability and control, operational cost and the flight safety. This you can see the configuration of the wing. It is aerofoil slip. Here is a flap. Here the vanes, spoilers, rear spar, slide track, front spars, slide track and so on. Next is the impenage. Impenage is also this you can see. This part is impenage. Okay, so here this door is also there. One, two, three, four, five. And no lift, no lift generation, stability and the trim and the control and balance of the aircraft is done by this. Impenage consists of the horizontal stabilizer here, vertical stabilizer, rudder, trim tab. Here we have the elevator and here also we have the trim tabs. Here we have different parts of this system, access door, interiors, rudder and so on are here, rudder trim tab, rear spar and the rear spar. So here we can see that these things are, here we have also have here interiors, structure, access doors. Leading edge of your this is shown here. These are the leading edge fin tip. It is called the fin tip. Here we have the leading edge auxiliary spars, front spars here. So different spars are here. Here these are the spars. These spars are making sure that strength, strength of, and the rigidity of the aircraft is and this vertical fin is maintained. Here also we have the spars for, for the horizontal also, elevator flight tab, stabilizer pivot point, stabilizer trim screw jack. Here we have the stabilizer screw jack, it is operated and your trim or the uh, trimming of the horizontal stabilizer can be achieved. Next is the airframe systems, it is fuseless, fuseless is full a typical part here, this you can see from here to here. This is the whole, uh, it is fuseless and it can be divided into the four part. There is a forward section, mid section, aft section and after body. In after body only your uh, empennage is fixed. Here, as you can see at the mid section, we have the fairings, wing sections and keelson. This whole, whole aircraft is fixed and load is taken by this keelson, like keel of the ship. Here also we have the keel of the aircraft. It is in the mid of the fuselage where your wings are fitted. Okay, so and because your engine is also there, your, your um, landing gears are also fixed. So this part should be very big. Here uh, it is given as per the year wise, how this progress of the Fuse days is done. If you see here, uh, 100, 200, 300, and these aircraft names are also given passenger capacity. Nowadays, we have 747 and 787, they have 800 to 900 capacity. Like this, we have the here A300 series, we have some 200, 250, 300 passenger capacity we have. So, accordingly, the size of the fuse days is increased as per this. Next question I am going to talk about illustrate the vehicle system of the aircraft with examples. So vehicle systems can be divided into main four parts that is the flight control system, propulsion system, a fuel system and the hydraulic and the pneumatic system. So if you talk about the vehicle system, in vehicle system we have the flight control, propulsion system, fuel system and the hydraulic system. So, flight control, if you see here, a very interesting, I will also explain with the help of my, this is small aircraft here. Suppose your aircraft is flying and you want to make nose up or the nose down. It is called the pitching, pitch control. So, this pitch control is done on the, with respect to the lateral axis. And here in the horizontal tail, we have the elevator. These elevators are operated by the help of the pilot. Pilot is operating the stick. This you can see in this diagram here. This stick is operated by the pilot. And this you can see if you are 
making down this elevator down then what will happen angle of attack will increase here at the tail and the lift will be here a force will be more force will be generated and this will force will make nose down so if you want to make nose down pilot will make a stick forward this stick forward will make elevator down so if you want to make nose down elevator has to go down if you want to make nose up elevator has to go up so that is the first operation of the elevator that is the pitch control if you want to make roll control so if i want and the roll controls are done by the ailerons ailerons are fitted on the wing at the tip of the wing at the trailing edge both the side but both will go in opposite direction if i want to make this is my right wing and if i want to make roll like this it means this wing should have more upward force this should have less upward force so i told you if you i want upward force i have to make this aileron down so left wing aileron has to go down so pilot will make like this stick will turn like this by turning like this this aileron will go down and this aileron will go up like this like this so here more lift will be there aircraft will roll like this so it is called the roll moment and the roll control is our aileron third is primary control is the yaw yaw means nose left or the nose down uh, right left right left right left right okay like this so how it will happen pilot ha has got the pedal by its pedal this you can see now these are the pedals here this pedal he will or she will press left or the right as he is or she is putting the right this will go towards the right so if the your this rudder is going right like this a force will be generated this side and it will move like this so right side and vice versa it will happen towards the left so if you make this thing towards the left the force will generate towards the right and it will make movement like this so it is the now we have the secondary flight control here we have the, the high lift control flap rounds and the slats these are already i have explained in my previous lectures next this you can see about the vehicle system and the, this is the propulsion system in this propulsion system aircraft has to propel means there some engine should be there and this engine has to operate and this should give the thrust so here we have the propulsion act of propelling to propel to move forward and here we have different here the uh, piston engine here it is in axial direction it is in the uh, in the circle circular here it is axial and here we have the turbo engine here we have the gas turbine engine and these are the reciprocating engine this one two and three they are the reciprocating and they are the rotary engines so they are the now i will discuss about the different types of engine we have the here turbo prop this is the turbo prop this is the turbo jet and this is the turbo fan okay so here the all are having the same principle in this turbo prop this here is the compressor this is the turbine this is the combustion chamber here so same way if you can see here this video here a uh, animation air is entering from this direction this it is a turbo fan engine so in this turbo fan what happens if you see more than 50% of air is entering in this zone this zone and okay this zone and this makes the uh, air speed increases and only 50% is entering in the main core out of that only 20% is increasing for the burning used for here and the combustion chamber the burning and remaining 30% he here also goes for the cooling so 50 plus 30 80% of air 
is used for cooling purposes and this fan will give additional thrust and this will join in the nozzle okay that is the purpose of this uh, turbo fan so turbo fan engines are become very compact size is reduced thrust is increased fuel consumption is reduced so nowadays most of the aircraft even now our fighter aircrafts also started using low bypass ratio turbo fan engine but in passenger aircraft we use the high bypass ratio turbo fan engine so here turbo jet turbo prop and the turbo shaft i have already this thing explained in my previous class now this you can see demonstrate the mission system of the aircraft with example so we have seen that in the mission system we have sensors mission computing and the weapon system and this sensors mission computing and the weapon system so mission system so first we have to discuss about the mission system the term mission system in encompasses everything other than avionics which directly affect the outcome of a military shortage anything from the physical reality of the mission computer and aircraft sensors through the software uploaded onto in the form of mission data to the process needed around the aircraft such as the mission system this you can see in this aircraft so many missiles bombs it is fully loaded aircraft and for each item they have the different missions it doesn't mean that everything will be exploded in the one point as per the requirement if it is a long range fighting the aircraft the pilot will release a missile which can go up to long range if it is the medium range a small another type of missile which can go if it is a very less then bombs or some other things will be dropped and accordingly it will be working and this all depends upon the sensors sensors are fitted on the aircraft those sensors will give the feedback to the computer and the computer will take the decision what type of actions they are required to take so describe the avionics system of the aircraft with example so here if you see, again i will discuss about uh, mission system uh, this uh, aircraft mission systems can be also divided in other areas like flood relief fire relief emergency uh, emergency medicines air air ambulance uh, then earthquake relief your uh, search and rescue also the anti submarine warfare search and uh, this uh, reconnaissance surveillance and the reconnaissance detecting the submarine also firing the underwater uh, elements this all so much uh, missions are there for the aircraft so these things not only this uh, uh, so many things especially for military aircraft lot of things has to be performed next i will talk about the avionic system describe the avionic system of the aircraft with examples so if you talk about the avionic systems avionic systems can be divided into the navigation control display and the communication so if we talk about the navigation means aircraft direction which direction aircraft has to go and it has to meet different speed different uh, locations where it is designated then we have the displays on board our uh, cockpit from there it will be shown mfd and all and then we have the communication system also the communication between the pilot to the atc atc to the pilot pilot to the other ground stations and vice versa it has to perform avionics systems first i will go for the navigation how this navigation positions are displayed here altitude speed heading heading earth related coordinates and position flight legs and here we have different types of bearings barometric altitude barometric magnetic compass radar altitude magnetic north true north and this all will be calculated by the computer and it will give the exact location and accordingly it will be fed to the autopilot and autopilot will give motion to the 
control and aircraft will move accordingly. Here also bearing true magnetic deviation, be, uh, magnetic bearing magnetic, true north, magnetic north and how much is the variation and it can be calculated. Drift angle also, it is a true air speed and it is a uh, ground speed, track and wind speed direction and in this we have to see that due to the effect of the wing, uh, wind also can be handled like that. So now I will talk about the again the navigation, aircraft navigation system in use today. We use the VOR DME beacon uh, alongside non-directional beacon, ground based navigation. These are the uh, VOR DME and NDB. Air data and the inertial navigation, they are the inertial sensors and air data. Global navigation satellite systems, we use the GPS, GNSS receivers and GLONASS. GLONASS is Global Naya Navigagia Naya Sputnikovaya Systemata, that is called Global Navigation Satellite System. So, GLONASS, GNSS is Global Navigation Satellite Systems. Okay, so this is the Russian uh, system which they are using. Navigation, another how to reach from 1.2 to 2.3. Here we have the uh, ground based navigation, VORs are used, VOR1, VOR2, VOR3. We also use the distance measuring equipments one, two, three, and in this way the navigation is achieved. So, global navigation and the satellite systems are used. Here we are using the GPS, global positioning systems, GLONASS, or constellations. Waypoint one, it is waypoint two, and the waypoint three, and these things are monitored with the help of the, uh, the satellites which are on the atmosphere from there these things are calculated and these things are uh, calibrated accordingly and the results are obtained in this way. Next is illustrate the mission avionics and discuss each of them. So what is the mission avionics and how these things are working. So here caution and the warning system, digital maps, Digital processor, fuel management system, instrument control panel and the modules, mission computers and throttle controls. So these are the few uh, mission mission avionics and uh, okay discuss it. So first one is uh, just I want to discuss about uh, caution and the warning system. So if you see that. Oh, once the aircraft is flying, suppose uh, there is a loss of pressure in hydraulic system. So there are some sensors, those sensors will transmit the signal to the pilot and also they will give signal to the computer and you know this nowadays we have the uh, multi redundancy system and these multi redundancy system will work and they will try to uh, help and energize another type of system. Those systems are useful for the display and correction of the system. We also have the digital maps in avionics. In olden days we used to have the paper map and pilot used to carry even scale and measurement devices. And one pilot will be totally busy for the mapping of the and giving the direction. Nowadays, these things are uh, uh, abolished and directly there is a screen and the pilot will just uh, see the screen and that screen uh, pilot will see the exact map and the, the location of the aircraft will be shown in that map. Display processors, these are the computer operated processors and they will operate a different uh, display on the cockpit and whatever uh, they want, this all will be displayed on the 
cockpit and like MFD or your HSI altimeter, all things will be, all the instrumentation will be shown on the cockpit and this will be displayed as per the required uh, locations. We also have the fuel management systems. These management, fuel management systems are operated in the fuel uh, systems. We know that the passenger aircrafts are carrying many tons of the fuel on board the ship, on board the aircraft. So if these aircrafts are not, fuel is not maintained properly, there may be shifting of the center of gravity and aircraft may start tilting. Also, an equal amount of fuel has to be reached from each place, from each tank, then only the aircraft will be in balance. There are also, there are multiple engines, two engines, three engines, four engines, five engines are also there. If the aircraft is big, there will be so many engines, but the requirement of engine has to be met by the fuel management system and it is a big system operated by the co computer com uh, control. There are some walls, there are some sensors. These uh, sensors will give signals to the computer and computer will give necessary command. Automatically it is done. There is no intervention of the pilot. Even pilot may not be aware that what is happening. If it is beyond the capacity, in extreme cases only, it will be displayed and pilot will be aware. Also, nowadays we have the fueling tank aircraft, which fuel one aircraft to another aircraft. You might have seen that the Rafale aircraft came from, from, from the France. In between, they were fueled by UAE. Their fuel tank has flown from there and it was fueled. Many times the Rafale aircrafts were fueled by the UAE, UAE fueler aircraft or the tanker. There also the fuel management system is very important because that tank has to understand that from which tank it has to be transferred. Whether it is the nozzle of that hose which is coming from the aircraft which is fueling is properly attached or not, it has to be sensed and there is a magnetic check that magnetic will hold it and it has to transmit that yeah it is properly fixed then only this aircraft will start giving the fuel to the another so it is called the fuel management system next is the instrument control panel and the modules so we have the instrument panel in front of the pilot and all the modules of these panels has to be operated by the help of the avionics. Avionics are operated by the help of the computer and this computer has to work in tandem with the all flight control systems, all pumps, pressure regulators, pressure relief valve and all other emergency systems has to work accordingly. Next is the mission computers. These computers are especially used for the military aircraft and these military aircrafts are very much able to perform by the help of these uh, computers because they are loaded with so many ammunition, equipments, uh, medical devices. They have to go in a required mission and they have to perform their mi mission as per required conditions. So, this avionics, this is done by the all avionics system like FIDAC, full authority digital electronic control. This is one of the main equipments which control the engine power as per the requirement of the aircraft. This has to be met, then only the aircraft will perform well. Next is the throttle control. So, this throttle control is done by the FADAC. Just now I have discussed. This FADAC is full authority digital electronic control. 
So this system is working with the help of the computer, with the help of the uh, sensor, with the help of the RPM of the engine. As and when the RPM is increasing or the decreasing, it will uh, increase or the decrease the fuel flow in the engine and the de demand of the aircraft will be met. Accordingly, the throttle of the engine will be done and this is nowadays is electronically controlled system and this electronic control system will work in tandem with other flight control system also. So as and when the uh, something is getting disturbed, this system will also uh, actuate and it will give the required throttle for the engine. These are the references which I have taken from Moir I and the CBS. Aircraft systems, mechanical, electrical and avionic system, professional engineering publication limited. Next is Moir and the Seabris, design and development of aircraft systems and introduction, AIA education series, AIA 2004. Any questions you are welcome to ask to me. My email is ydduvedi at the rate gmail.com. Please like and subscribe this channel. I will be very grateful if you do so. If any comments, you are welcome to give me the comments. I will be trying to improve if anywhere I feel you feel that it is to be improved. Thank you very much for the joining this class. Be tuned and good day. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.